Hello, everybody. Good to be with you again. Uh, we're, today, we're going to talk about a topic that I've been working with clients on in private session. I brought it up in Satsang yesterday. I am using it here as a, an investigative practice for me, uh, for, for, for awakeness as it speaks, comes through this unit, in, in, in a way of divesting the remaining identification that's here because I mean it's not like it you know it's not like I've graduated it's not like this is just a, this this identification like there's no identification here whatsoever I mean there's got to be some identification here you can't keep the biology alive but there's more than that in the sense that I, I, I do not live in the dream but I can visit <laughs> you know I mean it's something untoward happens and I, I may slip out of uh you know i may not be awake to that arising i'm not ashamed of it i mean who i would be who would be ashamed of it it's just the way things are this unit's exactly as awake at every moment as it's supposed to be and so is yours now the honesty that i'm driving at at that point uh, is that we have to become to be willing to notice that there's no personal character that, that, that there actually is no Fred, that that's a mythological and social construct. And all uh, that sounds really deep. And then I just mean that we, it's, it's just shit we make up. <laughs> there we got plain, plain speaking, Fred. So, um, and it really is just stuff we make up, but we don't recognize that we're making up. It just, because we're helped so much by the inherent conditioning interior and exterior that it just sort of rolls out on its own. It's not something we have to actively do. It's something that actively happens unless we're working for it not to happen. And it's hard to stay alert all the time, isn't it? I mean, that's the, it really is difficult. It is essentially impossible, okay? But I'm not gonna say that no one ever got there. I'm just gonna tell you that I haven't gotten there. How about that? The, uh, so, but fortunately, I don't, you know, I, I visit the dream, but I, I, don't, I don't have to live there anymore which is great. And when I do visit, it's usually for a short period of time, and I don't take it, but, but very even totally seriously, even when I'm involved with the dream, because there's something that's seeing it, this is just ridiculous. I just, there's just not enough, uh, there's no control here, and there's simply not awake, an, enough awakeness present for, to stop the body from acting in a, an unconscious way. So uh, I, I often tell the story about um, my first wife, and uh, her name was Trisha, and she was a wonderful human being, and she married a son of a bitch. It's just that simple. And um, one time I had my, was, my voice, I was, I mean, my voice was quite raised in anger, and right at the peak of that, there came uh, I mean, just where I'm just being, there was a recognition at the very peak of that, that this was abusive. And uh, I was about 21, 22, you know, I thought I was king of the world. And then that voice came in and it said, this is unacceptable. You must never, ever do that again. And I went, <laughs> And it's never happened since. So that was, in other words, that was really seeing the truth. That's full penetration. That's where, where large change can take place instantly, and it's rare. It's very rare. But it does happen, as it, as is pictured there. I mean, that had I don't, that wasn't the first time I'd ever done that. It was just the first time that I ever noticed it, that awakeness ever put its attention on that in a forceful way. So coming to see that the truth is in the, in the short term, it's usually, it can, can easily be painful, but in the long run, boy, is it beneficial. And the truth that I wanna to talk to you about today is coming to recognize that these characters, the, the personalities here that are just really, it's a collection of patterns, but it appears to be something, but it's not. It just appears to be, so it's the Hurricane Fred, but no center, right? Just all, lots of patterns, but no center. And that, 
it's coming to recognize that these things are inherently unsatisfiable. You can't make them happy. It doesn't make any difference what you do for them. They will not, they will not, you can't make them happy. Not by giving them this and giving them that and doing this for them and doing that for them. And you know, I just, I mean, I, I, I've gone out of my way to, <laughs> to dress this thing in a way that is, falls in line with the unit's preferences, to comb its hair in a way that falls in line with the unit's preferences. Um, I have new glasses on the way, which uh, I believe will fall closer into the unit's preferences. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'm living a great story here with Betsy and the dog. So it's, that's certainly within preferences, but it still won't satisfy Fred because see the nature of Fred, it, the, the, the word Fred is a symbol for a certain level of resistance over here to the way things are. And you can test this on yourself right now. And that is just, I know that it, that it seems impossible. So I want you to just pretend for a moment that you could drop the personality. What if you could just drop the personality that you think is seeing all of this and just let that go. Just sort of be the neutral seeing of this. Witness this. So I want you to tell me if in the absence of a character, if you can find a problem. In the absence of, for me, it would be in the absence of a Fred, can I find a problem? And the answer is absolutely not. So <clears throat> in the absence of a problem or a plus, can I find a Fred? No. And Fred's not about pluses. Fred's about complaints. I just throw that in there so that, uh, so that nobody says, well, what about this? <laughs> God almighty. I mean, the email I get, you just can't believe it, right? I mean, people just grab all of one little thing here and they just, ooh, and then they just hold forth. And they really think I'm gonna read the whole email. <laughs> and that's just not true. I read short emails. And uh, until, until I get to the point where I see it's not pointless for me to read them, and then I delete them. Right. It's just that simple. The, uh, well, I send back, I've got a form thing now that I will usually send back, which tells you a little bit about the teaching and how you can partake of it. Um, but there's no point in my wasting time where there's not openness. There has to be openness. And when somebody takes the position and pulls one little piece of something out and it presents this as the truth, that person doesn't, has not, has, the, the one who's begging, who's saying, I am clear, and Fred is not, that person has no interest in clarity. I'm not saying that this thing is 100% correct on all, everything, it's not. But what I am saying is that if you pick out, um, one thing and just decide you're going to harp on that or two things or three things or whatever. And I've got 160 videos and hundreds, thousands of written pages of written text in between the website and the books. Um, then, you know, that you may just, and you may just be a little narrow <laughs> to hold me to this or that and the other. So I'm getting way off track. We're, we're supposed to be talking about these, unsatisfiable characters and that's the and the recognition is to see very clearly that the damn things are unpleasable for any length of time whatsoever even if you get them exactly what they want the moment they have it they go oh this will never last right and that's that's it they'll just they'll they'll, they'll end it right there they'll end it just by noticing that it's good and it can't stay good because this is relativity. So the, now the bad things are, it's just unbelievable what we do. But it's what we do, it's what we all do, and we do it every day. It's a matter of degree. We do it to a greater or lesser degree. But you know, in awakening sessions, I lead people to a point where they can see what is as it is. And uh, I mean, not everybody, but 
the vast, vast majority of people will come to see what is as it is. And what is as it is is quite a different from quite different from where we spend all of our time in, in, during the day, which is uh, we spend all of our time in what we think about what is, right? And see, those are two completely different things. What we think about what is has nothing to do with what is, and we but, but we spend all of our focus, all of our time, all of our attention on what we think about what is. So I actually take people to a place where the vast majority will see what is as it is, and they will see that there's no alternative and that there is no um, comparison. Duh, there's just what is. How could there be a comparison? So the reason I do this is that it is to help them see that there really is no alternative. There really is no comparison. There's just this, and you don't have to give in to it. You don't have to go along with it. I mean, you can set yourself up and be crushed every day <laughs> if you don't want to give in to it, if you're not going to, if you're not going to allow that to happen. But that is what will happen because what will be, what will, will be, and it will do it on top of you or with you, either one. It doesn't care. It's fine. The, uh, tell people that, you know, when uh, I was telling somebody, I think yesterday or the day before about uh, my days in early recovery and that I saw, it was a vision I've spoken before where I looked up in the sky and it was like, there were like insects and I don't think they were really there. It was, just, <laughs> it was a hallucination, which we love to call visions when they're spiritually inspired. And what I could see was, I could just see a whole, the whole sky was full of insects and full of life is what it really represented. It was just life. And that life was moving across the sky just like this. And it was moving like that, right? Like, a, like, a, like in a half circle, if you will. And that all of it, everything was moving this way except for one thing. And that was me, right? And I was going the other way. And it, and it was the perfect metaphor for my life. I could see. And that was like, holy shit, the whole universe is going one way and I'm going another. This is not going to work. The seeing of that, that was another place of full penetration in the sense that what I saw was what I'm doing doesn't work and can never work, which is relying on Fred to run Fred's life, so-called life. But to, at the time, I didn't, it wasn't a so-called life. It, I just believed it was Fred's life. I believed that Fred was living instead of the fact that Fred Ness is being lived, which is the actual truth of it. Isn't it? So these points where we see something plainly and bluntly and powerfully, these can create dynamic change instantly. I'm not saying they always do, they don't, but they can. And I know that this has been helpful for people. I've gotten, a, I've gotten feedback, so just try this on. All of the things that you want, if you get them, you will not be happier. You, you might be, I mean, if you're, if you're down in the, if you're down in the gutter, like where a, a little bit of money makes a big change in your life, then a little bit of money is going to be very helpful. And a little more money will create a yet nicer brand of story. But after that, it's diminishing returns. But trust me, I've, I've gone the full gamut. And it's, and you, it's just diminishing returns. You're just, you, because you, you cease to be so deeply, deeply grateful to not be in the park and you're just going to take it for granted that you're going to wake up in the suburbs. <laughs> and if not, well, there's something wrong. Instead of the fact, oh my God, I'm in the suburbs. And that's, why we, that's actually how we felt when we first moved in here. Betsy and I spent six months waiting for the grown-ups to show up and usher us out and, uh, or for the owners to show up and, and, and throw us out. It was because it was just such a huge move for us when we moved. I we went in a park. We weren't in the park, but we were in um, my first apartment, which uh, I remember I took my uh, Roland, my um, 
web guy, my tech guy. And I took him and showed it to him and he went, oh my God. <laughs> and it wasn't that it was that bad, it's just that it was that different from what he had just seen as we drove from this house to that house. And uh, we're to, to that uh, duplex. You can't make them happy. You can't keep them happy. If you can get them happy, you can't keep them happy. It is just, it's a losing battle. I promise you, it's a losing battle. So this place where I'll take people to where they can see what is, that's for them to come to recognize that there's no such thing as what isn't. That that's just their pure imagination. And this teaching chiefly is to free you from your imagination. Awakeness. It's not to free Bob from Bob's uh, imagination because there ain't no Bob, so there's no Bob's imagination. There's only awakeness functioning through different units. But when it functions through units, it, it's not an accident that it gets confused as to what it is. And that's the whole plan. Until it gets tired of the story is the way I see it. And then that unit begins to wake up. It becomes the seeking unit. But up until that point, the plan is to live in separation, live just as if this was there was separation here, when of course there's not. But you know, there's the sense of separation, just like there's a sense of a Fred, but that doesn't mean there is separation, it doesn't mean there's a Fred. So simply seeing the truth, seeing when when I when awakening occurred. And I was so, I was just so keen. Fred was just right on pins and needles. He got to wait till he woke up and was going to be even cooler than he was now, if you can imagine. And um, Fred didn't wake up. Awakeness woke up instead. And when that happened, you can never completely unsee that. You can forget it. You can, you can believe that you've completely unseen it, or you can, you can deny it. I did it. I did that. I denied it. That I, after, in post-awakening, I denied that I had woken up because my experience didn't compare to Byron Katie's. That's what I could saw when I read. But now I see that my, my, actually it does compare, but I was simply misreading a book. That, was, that you know, I mean, it was a pretty good, fair amount of comeback date in that book anyway, but the, uh, but it was mostly, um, uh, I'd like to think that it was mostly my misrepresentation of what was in there. Um, because I really thought that, you know, that wow, <laughs> that really just uh, place that I had, you know, I had a fairy tale awakening and I thought that was what it was supposed to be. I didn't understand that that was completely insignificant other than to show me the truth, to point out the truth. But, but, but that, 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 that it was just pointing that out and, and, and I wanted to stay in the doorway because that's the doorway to real awakening. And I wanted to stay in the doorway. That's not what doorways are for. They're not to, to stand in. They're not to bask in. They're not to, oh boy, I wonder what's beyond this. I think I'll just sit here forever and wonder. Doorways are for walking through. And it took me a while to walk through that one. And I help people walk through that one every, every day because Clearing up is so much more difficult and so much more time consuming than waking up. I got an email this morning from a, a woman I know. And she said, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've, I'm not awake to my true nature, but I'm not sure that I'm ready to wake up. And it's like, well, the one who's speaking that will never be ready. So the, what they have to understand is that awakeness has brought that unit to fretness, which means the odds are extremely strong that she is ready. See, that's the only reason she's showing up here, is that she is ready. Almost nobody shows up here that, that quote, you know, is not ready. Readiness doesn't happen. Everybody waits to be ready for their whole lives, and they die without ever waking up. And that's the way it's always been for thousands of years, and I can't see it hardly changing. It is changing in the sense that more people are waking up, but, you know, I don't, I, you know, uh, <clears throat> we're kind of a rush here. <laughs> we're in a rush here to see how many of us can wake up prior to the planet going down the tubes perhaps you know that's the way that's the way it feels so i'm saying don't wait go ahead and just 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 go ahead and wake up now right and um there's no there's no benefit to waiting 
and there is a great benefit to waking up right now. But that's not going to happen as long as you're trying to satisfy that unit. Because the unit is simply unsatisfiable, no matter what you give it. They are, the, because satis and because just check this. Think about this. Just try this on right now. In the absence of resistance, Can you find a character? In other words, in the absence of resistance right now, I notice that there's no Fred to find because Fred is resistance. That is the nature of a Fred is resistance. So that what the, the, and the clearing process is simply reducing that resistance. We, we talk about it like we're making these units clear up, and that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about awakeness clears up. And actually, awakeness doesn't clear up. Awakeness is always, always here and always clear. It doesn't need Fred Davis to help it along. But awakeness through these units, uh, operating through these units, that gets confused, and that needs a Fred Davis. How do we know? It gets one. It's got one, right? The, um, and this teaching can't happen unless there are people who are ready for it, and there cannot be people who are ready for it, and this teaching not exist. Welcome to relativity, <laughs> where everything is balanced out in the end. <sighs> but you can give up on these units. You can give up on try, trying to, to, to desperately try to please them as if it's life or death. Listen, this thing still shops at Amazon and enjoys it. It's okay. And, I, and all, all you rich people out there, don't worry about it. You don't have to give up your stuff, okay? They you keep your stuff. I give, could give a damn less about your stuff. And I get, it goes for everybody else, too. I just like to pick up rich because I've got a, a number of well-to-do clients and who have sad stories, right? And that the rest of us are standing in line to try to, to get. <laughs> We're trying to trade in our sad story for theirs. It's all relative, right? It's, 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 it's a, if you think it's a bad story, it's a bad story. It doesn't make any difference if you're the king of England. You got it. If you're the king of England and you think, <laughs> I just can't believe this, this, king gig it's just killing me right then it's just gonna kill you we all think it would be wonderful because we're projecting our fantasies onto onto your realities and uh, that won't work but we do it anyway they're unsatisfiable there's nothing you can do to please them Indefinitely. There's nothing you can, and there's nothing you can buy for them that will make them happy. I've bought three cars since waking up, and I have known, particularly on the last two, but even, but on, but, but to a degree on the all the last three, that buying them was not going to make me happy. It just made sense at the time to do so. Right? I mean, it, the, 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 actually four cars since I woke up, and all, all four of them were, and I'm not certainly didn't buy them to make me sad, but I understood that it wasn't that this was not the thing that was going to complete me. So I went to the dealership complete, right? And I just got some excess. <laughs> I got a, I mean I got a whole home here full of excess. I don't need I don't, I don't need all this. How do I know? I've lived without it. Do I like it? Yes. Will it satisfy a Fred? No, mm -mm. it will not. It will not. He will come up with complaints about this in no time. He'll come up with complaints about his perfect wife, his perfect time, his perfect dogs, his perfect situation, right? He really will. That's what Freds do. They are resistance itself. And we live in a culture of complaint because that complaining is what keeps the ego alive. And as long as you remain as a player in the culture of complaint, you ain't waking up. Or if you do, you can you wake up that you're not going to stay awake. There's no one. Because you can be, you can be 
you can be uh, com you can be complaining or you can be free, but you can't be both at the same time. That's simple. One, but n n neither one of them will ex accept its opposite. So that's really that's really all I got to say. I mean, I, I've had a good time saying it. it. Doesn't seem like much of a talk, but maybe there's something in here that you'll find useful. I hope so. Um, I always find these things useful just because coming here and telling myself the truth is a big deal. Because there's, if there's anything that we need to do in order to wake up, whether it's for the first time or the last time, let's just tell just be honest, tell ourselves the truth and be, be willing to be other than the way we are. And where's that willingness come from? Don't ask me, right? It's just, I gotta use, gotta use language. Okay, everybody, I love you very much. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Come to Satsang. If you're not coming to Satsang, come to Satsang. It is, it, it changes people. You know, I've got some people who've recently come in and they're just tickled to death. They get a, they get a room full of type teachers for the price of, you know, for the price of, of, of me. And for the price of one. And, um, I'm just sort of really the ringmaster in Satsang more than I am the leader, you know? So at any rate, uh, I hope to see all of you soon and, uh, nice to be with you today. Bye-bye.